All right, so you've got one of these and you got this. Up till now, that's all you got. But now there's this, the Air Step Light by Exonic. We're going to learn how to make this thing work with the Yamaha today, right here on Geargasm. everybody welcome to Geargasms I'm your host Alan Barnes today I have the Air Step Light by Exonic I'm so excited when they first contacted me about this product and said hey you want to try and use it on your channel as a remote for the Yamaha THR I was like sure that sounds like it would be pretty cool so as I often do when a company I'm not familiar with reaches out to me I do a little search and usually what I find is I hit YouTube and the other channels that have already done it are little bedinka dinky channels like mine, except smaller. I mean, sometimes less than 100 subs. So that's my peer group. I'm like the smartest kid in the slow class. Aww. I ain't mad about it. When I look this thing up, nothing but the biggest YouTubers has gotten this already, RJ. Of course, Glenn from Spectre Sound Studios, lots and lots of people. My friend Carl Golden from Golden Studios. And of course, I'm rocking his shirt because Carl Golden has a bunches and bunches of subs, several hundred thousand subs. His channel is huge. And out of the blue, he has been so nice to me, reached out to me, told me about shorts. He's helped me so much along the way. Didn't have to do a damn thing because technically I'm his competition. So Carl Golden, check him out. But I digress. So when I saw that I was the first non-superstar YouTuber to get one of these, I was pretty stoked. Now this thing comes shipped in the app with lots of presets to lots of different applications. You can use it with YouTube. It, and how it does it is HID messages. And for you computer nerds out there know what that is, that there is keyboard strokes. Control Z, the number one spacebar, whatever you can put in with a keyboard, you can train this thing to send that keystroke. Super sweet if you need hands-free control of any of your software. Nice. Full stop. If that was all it did, I'd be in love with it. But there's more. It works with Yamaha. I was like, okay, how's that work? And they said, it works with MIDI BLE. And I was like, Ugh. MIDI. Oh. I'm a nerd. I'm a big nerd, but MIDI, come on. Now, if you're into MIDI, first thing I want to do is apologize to you for pushing you down on the playground. I was young. I was stupid. I'm really sorry. But MIDI, I ain't no keyboard player, son. I ain't programming stuff into a sequencer. I'm not Nick from Duran Duran. What do I, what do I know from MIDI? I was like, oh. But relax. It's not as hard as you think. I'm going to go through this thing, showing how I trained it to interface with the THR. I do understand that a built-in remote to the THR is a coming, but even for me, not a mini guy, it wasn't super hard. I'll show you what I did and I'll show you some of the other things you can do, but first, the data. Yes, it's the AirStep Lite. It is a wireless Bluetooth unit. It takes a 9-volt battery adapter input, just a standard boss type pedal adapter, but it also comes with a USB port to charge that baby up if you don't happen to have it. Switch on the back power on and off a function switch. We might get into that later. Little antennae. Now, I can't remember exactly, so sue me. It was something like 250 to 300 hours of time on a single charge with use, leaving the power on. Huh? What? 
What that is, is good engineering. That's not magic. That's good, efficient engineering. Credit right away for that. Now, I ain't left it on for 300 hours. I ain't got that kind of time, but it has been on for a couple of days while I've been messing with it, in part because as I made progress, I was afraid if I turned it off, all my progress would go away. But still, that's crazy. Five switches on the front. You can program them to be momentary. You can program to be, them to be latching. You can do all kinds of hoo-ha, all kinds of stuff. You can pair this thing with your iPad. You can pair it with software. You can pair it with almost anything you could pair Bluetooth with, except for your grandma, because it's not her teeth that are blue, it's her hair. Still. All right, so current state of the Yamaha, if you own one of these things and you want to switch between tones or make other adjustments, you either got to touch the unit or touch the iPad. <laughs> And maybe you want a little more umph. Or maybe you're playing the Redneck National Anthem. Your cousin's getting moist. She's leaning over to give you a little smoochy, smoochy. But oh, you need a beefier tone for the pre-chorus that... No, I can't change. So wouldn't it be cool you're playing something clean? You need to switch to something a little dirtier. Oh, there it is. something beefier for that still, don't you? Ooh, you suck. So you're on channel two and that sounds kind of cool, but does it sound right for the, the guitar solo dingy dingy? Oh my lord, that sounds anemic. What about that? that cool look here's what's cool too it's, watch it switch on an amp oh yeah there's five there's three <laughs> watch what happens on the old iPad look at that oh there's a picture of the amp now that feels like a lag and a delay when you're seeing that graphic come up but there is no lag or delay on the tone I shows ya. Instant gratification. I love it. Now I just programmed it to do the five presets because five switches coordinate with the five presets that are on the Yamaha. But you might want to do other things. You might want to turn things on and off like reverb or delay. You may want to, who knows, anything that you can do with a switch in the application, you can do with the air step. You cannot spin knobs and all that stuff. It has to be like an on-off switch. It takes a MIDI message to do that. MIDI messages can't, can't spin the dials, unfortunately. There is no such magic, but that's pretty cool. The first thing you want to do is update your firmware. I downloaded this particular package. It allowed me to select my Bluetooth device if it was hooked up. Another thing you're going to need to install is a BLE MIDI app. It doesn't really do anything except sit between the software, I think, and it translates MIDI messages. Not sure that's entirely accurate. So, and just so you know, this is not a tutorial. Please don't ask questions about how to do this. Oh, I can't answer them. I won't suck. answer them because I just sort of struggled and stumbled. But when you get in here to the to the actual screen, you could see that you can assign a whole bunch of things. And what you could do is, what you basically do is you hit a button on the air step and then you assign it. If you want to send a controller message to that knob, you can. You can't really though. So even though there's a signs there, I'm not really sure how to move those knobs, 
But if you look on these assigns here, you can turn things on and off. And that's what you can do. So you can set up a Yamaha, one Yamaha preset that basically just switches through and you can see where I set them up here, preset button one. But you could set it another set to where, you know, okay, the first three switches are presets and then the last two, they stay on the same preset, but one switch turns on the, you know, uh, the chorus. And then, you know, of course you could set that up to turn on flange or whatever. And same thing here. You could set that up to turn on echo, reverb, stuff like that. So you can kind of use these on off switches to assign things. You, I don't think you can change cabinets like right here. There's an assign there, but I don't think you can do much. Basically where there are signs and switches. This is a great thing. If you want to use the foot switch to switch between modern, classic, and boutique, you can do that as well. So it's actually pretty cool. You can do a lot of things with the Yamaha in this particular air step light. I'm so tickled. This is going to help a lot of Yamaha users. Again, not a tutorial. Don't ask me. Use your resources. Use your tools. I'm not one of them as, as much as so many of you call me a tool. What did we learn today? We learned it. These two things can be friends, even with the stupidity between them that is me. We learned that the manual is not quite where it needs to be. None of the documentation and the how-tos are quite where they need to be. You've got to be a little bit of an adventurous spirit to grab this thing. You can get through it. Not all of you are going to have the benefit of the owner of the company coaching you through it like I am, I know. But more documentation and tutorials are coming, I promise. We also learned that if software designers would make it so that their products would interact with keystrokes and not just the touch stuff on the screen, this thing could control almost anything. As always, I thank you for your time. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Tell some of your low rent friends and some of your midi nerd friends about Geargasms. Maybe they'll like it now. I don't know. If you want to help the channel out, like I helped my buddy Carl Golden out, you can buy a Geargasms t-shirt. We sell them at the same place. Links are in the description. Whatever you do in the next seven days, don't tell your friend who's a MIDI nerd about it. Because he's just going to go, everybody knows that's MIDI message 126, not MIDI message 122. You actually sent a note on off message to the controller. Then you're going to kill him. But whatever you do, play more guitar, watch less YouTube, and keep coming back here week after week for more Geargasms.